support material six, we're looking at tax planning. Okay, the tax that you'll see here isn't as advanced as the tax 2601, which you've already completed. Okay, so you'll see a lot of this is very introductory, and the focus here is more on individuals. The focus in tax 2601 was more on companies. Okay, that's the big distinction. Okay, so when approaching study unit six, always remember we're focusing on personal financial management. Okay, so as an individual, as a person, okay, do I need to plan in terms of my income tax? Yes. Of course you do. Okay, and how do we plan our income tax? We need to look at things like deductions. We need to look at things like income, income that's exempt, income that's not. And we need to look at other things like refunds or liabilities. Okay, so who owes who? Do I owe SARS or do they owe me? Okay. All right, so let's start off by defining it. What is income tax? Why? Good. Correct. Good. So remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Okay. What were some of our basic needs? Good. Good. Yes. Okay. So... Do we need police? So you, you, you spoke about career planning, you want to be a police, or you want to be a police officer when you're young. Okay, do we need police officers? Of course we do. Okay, who's going to pay those police officers? Exactly. Okay, so certain services need to be provided by government, because if it wasn't, no one is going to pay for it. Okay, things like healthcare, things like security, things like roads and infrastructure. Okay, that those are necessities into all well, necessities in terms of public goods that we all require to make sure we run a successful country. Okay, so what is income tax? It's a mandatory contribution which members of society make towards costs for society. Okay, in terms of benefits for society. Okay, so schools, roads, infrastructure. Okay, um, sewerage, um, water pipes. Electricity, all of that, okay, that's part of your income tax planning. Okay, so you need to be part of that contribution. Okay, the more we contribute, hopefully the better the country will be. Okay, which is better, or which is allowed rather, tax avoidance or tax evasion? Tax avoidance. Correct. Yeah, tax avoidance is allowed in terms of reducing your tax as much as possible. Tax evasion is bad. Okay, you'll go to jail for evading tax. You won't for avoiding it. Okay, avoiding means paying tax, but paying as little as possible in line with the legislation. Okay. All right, so what different types of taxes do we get? Well, you get direct, you get indirect, and you get other. So can you give me some examples of direct tax? Good. Good. Oh, okay, they're all there. All right, I shouldn't have revealed it so early. But anyway, okay, sure. Direct income tax, property tax. Why is it direct? It's specific to that particular individual or property. Okay, indirect is government collects tax from you as the consumer when you buy goods that have VAT, but they're collecting it from who? The company. Yeah, so it's indirect. Okay, excise duty, sin taxes, import tax. Those are some examples. Right, other would be capital gains, donations, and estate duty. Okay, so you can't get away from tax. You pay tax throughout your life. Even when you die, okay, death taxes, inverted commas, would be your estate duty tax. Okay, is that right? Great. Okay, so tax is levied, levied, sorry, levied by registered businesses. Okay, right, what is a registered business? Yeah, so registered would be businesses that are legal entities, separate legal entities. Okay, so goods and services, imports of goods, supply of services. Okay, and you can also register as a VAT vendor. Well, it's voluntary, okay, but if you exceed a certain threshold, okay, then it becomes mandatory. Okay, so as long as you're um, below, it's voluntary.
okay, below the threshold. As soon as it's above, you don't have a say. Okay, you will register as a VAT vendor because now SARS will want to collect VAT to all the items that you're selling. Okay, what's the difference between input and output? Do you remember? What is it? What type of account is it? Which element? Asset liability, income, expense, capital drawings. So it's a, it's a, an asset. Yes, why? I was that okay, because it comes you in, it, you, you claim it, it yes. Out. And output is? Liability. Correct. And, and the difference would give you what? Your, your amount of this Correct. Or refund. refund or liability, good. Okay, and with that, you get different periods. Okay, certain suppliers, uh, when I say suppliers, certain businesses that supply goods and services that have that could be asked to pay it monthly, every two months, or every six months. It all depends on the type of business you're running. Okay, all right, so here's a simple example. I want to see if you can calculate that. Okay, what are the VAT amounts in this particular question? Okay, which are the output amounts and which are the input amounts? Okay, input minus output gives you either refund or actually the other way around, output minus input. It depends, okay, whichever is bigger. If it's bigger, then you'll have a liability. If it's smaller, you'll have a refund. Okay, so which do we have here? First, get the VAT. Okay, could you try work that out? Chosen there, you can actually work out how to calculate that. The amounts? The amounts, like that. Yes, you can. All right, let's see if you're right. What's the first one? It's 14,000 input VAT. Yes, that's input VAT. 14 is input, I agree. Yeah. This is? Service payment, that's a payment, it's not income, but also 7,000 input. Okay, yeah, it's a service payment. So a payment would be seen as input because you've paid for certain services. And this is? Correct. Okay, so 28 minus 14 minus 7 equals 7,000 liability good. Well done. Okay, and that's VAT. I used to look at VAT in my fun. Good. Okay, you're very familiar with it. Nice. Great. Okay, so tax is levied on profits made on the sale of assets. Okay, so here we're looking at CGT. Okay, if I sell an asset, okay, and the asset is considered capital in nature, will I have CGT? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so businesses and individuals are taxed on income and capital appreciation. Okay, there's two types of tax that you can get, okay, in terms of, let's say, operations. Okay, income tax or capital gains. Okay, they tax your capital and they tax your income. SARS determines what is taxable, i.e., you get deemed disposals. Okay, so if you decide to emigrate, that's a deemed disposal. Okay, or if you decide to get divorced, or if you decide to um, transfer assets, okay, there could be a deemed disposal. Okay, complex CGT calculations are beyond the scope of this course. Okay, we've actually looked at it in Tax 2601. We're not going to look at it in this module. Okay, there. Other modules, yes. So at a second, third year level, even honours, you would take the legislation further. Right, yeah. Um, at some point in your degree, if you do do more tax modules, you're actually going to have to buy the legislation. Okay, the thick book with all the acts. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, yeah, it's very, very uh, law specific. Okay, the the better you are with, um, how can I say, uh, learning, like like studying, um, you should find tax easy if that's the type of person you are, because it's very, very rule based. Yeah. So, what do I do when this happens? What do I do when this happens? Okay, you need to know the acts. You need to know the legislation. Okay, or where to find it at least. Okay. Yes. Okay, and then financial planning. How is tax associated or uh, let's say linked to financial planning? You can't increase your financial independence if you don't manage your tax. Okay, you need to try reduce the tax as much as possible because that's more money in your pocket and less money in the government's. Okay, tax avoidance is fine. Tax evasion is bad. Okay, you you pay your tax, but you pay your fair share of tax. You don't want to pay more than what you should. Okay, you pay what you need to. At least you've met the legislation. Okay, you're not avo you're not evading the tax. You're just paying the minimum amount of tax. Okay, so a few questions for CGT. Who's liable for it? Yes, everyone. So natural and juristic persons, companies, and individuals. Which assets are affected? Good. All assets, capital assets, capital in nature. Correct. Individuals get exclusions. Uh, for cars, individuals cannot claim. Um, okay, so it depends on what are you using the car for. Is it for residential purposes or is it for business purposes? No, no. I think you're talking about a primary residence exclusion. That's for property. Yeah, for property you get a primary residence exclusion. So if you're living in that property and you decide to sell it, okay, a certain amount of that gain will be excluded. Okay, and, and that gets reviewed every year. Okay, in the in the budget. Okay, so I can show you that quickly. Um, tax two six zero one. Sure. Okay. Uh, maybe find it in the in the book while I put up the budget pocket guide. I just want to show you the exclusions. What is that's under what is what is excluded from capital gains? Okay. Okay. We'll look at that. Uh, yes. Okay. We'll look at that. Um, all right, I see it's not here. Okay, there's the capital gains. Okay, so you see, here's the 2 million. 2 million rand gain or loss on the disposal of your primary residence. Okay, most personal use assets. Okay, so you're right. Okay, so personal use assets wouldn't carry any capital gains, CGT. Okay, all right. Hi, um, I'm almost done. Just need to finish this lecture and then you can come join us. Okay, you can come sit with us for personal financial management, but... <laughs> It's not going to help too much. Okay. All right. We're almost done. Okay. All right. So most personal use assets don't carry CGT. Okay. Why? Capital gains tax is only levied on assets that you buy and sell that are used as part of the business. Yeah. All right. Or as an individual, as part of your... Yeah. Not personal use assets, but other. So maybe vehicles um, that are... Well, not for business specifically, but um, okay. I see what you're trying to say in terms of an, a car that's used for personal use and a car that's used for business. Okay, so uh, you know, your example that you had was on page one one one. One one one. Okay. It's towards the middle of page one one. All right, great. Okay, so yeah, page one oh one. One one one. Sorry. Yeah, one one one. Oh, one one one. Yes, one one one. One one. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, your question is about. What is excluded from CGT? Okay, so a primary owned dwelling. Okay, okay. here they're looking at exclusions. Right, remember, here's an exclusion. Okay, specific exclusions. All right, so as an individual, your primary residence would be excluded for, from, for, or let's say in terms of capital gain purposes. You wouldn't have to pay CGT on your primary residence so long as you're living in that property. Okay. If you sell your house, you would pay CGT, 
only after the 2 million rand exemption. Okay, so if you make a 2 million rand profit on the sale of your primary residence, right, you'd be able to exclude that. Right, but as soon as you make a profit of more than 2 million, you're going to have to pay CGT. Okay, so just be careful with, with this. Okay, when you read this, what is excluded from CGT, they're talking about the specific legislation. Okay, so gains and losses on currency, small businesses disposed, persons older than 55, okay, uh, lump sum gratuities um, in the form of annuity policies or second-hand policies, okay, compensation for illness or injuries, okay, those are all policy related, winnings from lotteries and competitions, okay, that's, that's separate, that's excluded, exclusions, things that aren't taxed, okay, specifically. All right, but yeah, okay, that's very, very detailed. Don't worry about detail because they're not going to test detail when it comes to the tax. The tax yeah. Correct, okay. All right, what is included in the base cost of the asset? Your cost of purchase. Correct, okay, all the costs directly associated with getting the asset. Okay, what events cause CGT? When you, make, when you sign an asset off a certain time, you make a Disposal, yes, good. And what's excluded from it? Excluded. Um, things that we now that and yes, okay. Legislation determines the exclusions 100%. Well, well done, good. Okay, so. Yeah, go for it. Um, any questions about those? Happy. Okay, good. But as I said, you, you've covered the 261, so this should be quite, quite easy to, to interpret, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, fine. Great. Okay, when does the deferral of CGT occur? Deferral means? I move it later on. Okay, so it would occur with a rollover. Okay, so a spouse, for example, husband and wife, if the husband gives an asset to the wife, okay, there's a rollover generally, i.e., the wife won't pay CGT when she receives it. Let's say the, the, the husband passes away, okay, and now property is left to the house. Uh, the, the house, i.e. the property is left to the wife, okay, there's a roll over. So she will be able to pay CGT only when she sells the asset. She wouldn't have to pay it when she receives it from the husband. Okay, yeah, there's a few examples, uh, well, a few considerations. Again, a little bit beyond the scope, okay. How are the gains and losses calculated, though? Yes, okay. Proceeds minus base costs. Legislation determines what the proceeds are and what the base cost is. Okay, that's that hectic calculation to tax 2601. All right. Serious? Okay, so maybe you should look over that work again, yeah. All right, if, if you ever need it again in the future. All right, what relief is there from CGT? We just saw it. Yes. Okay. And there are percentages that are allocated. Okay, 50 and 25. Right, those are the old... Percentages, okay, I need to update it. Okay, obviously the maximum effective rates have changed. Okay, the exclusion rates for individuals and companies change year by year. All right, so the new legislation, in your in your tax 601 notes, I had a slide on that. Yeah, um, 15 slash 16 tax year, and then 16 slash 17 tax year. So we're in the current 16 slash 17 tax year. Okay, great. All right, and then I've got a note here about donations tax. Okay, so even if you donate goods, you're still going to have to pay taxes. But you only pay tax on the amount exceeding? 100,000, yes. So if you donate 200,000 during the tax year, will donations tax apply? Yes, it will. Because now you've exceeded? The 100,000. The 100,000, correct. So 100,000 times 20% is... 20,000. Okay, so you would end up paying 20,000 tax on the donation exceeding 100,000. Okay, this we will cover in estate planning when we look at that a bit later. That's one of your separate chapters. Okay, but this is just looking at the tax side of things. Right, so what tax do I pay on death? Estate duty. Okay, estate duty is the same as donations tax, it's levied at 20%. Okay, you only pay death taxes, right, or estate duty, inverted commas, okay, that's the correct name for it, on an estate exceeding three and a half million. All right, so as soon as your assets exceed three and a half million, you would then incur an additional tax in the form of estate duty at 20%. Okay, 
Okay. The calculation is quite, let's say, simple to do, but the problem comes in here is what is deemed to be property and what isn't. Okay, property is just everything you own. Okay. Yes, deemed property is more like policies. Yes, exactly, yes. Okay, good. Right, so the gross estate is the total. The net estate, okay, is then reduced by the exclusion, okay, three and a half million. And the difference, i.e. what's left over, is then taxed at 20%. Okay, but again, you're not going to have to do calculations of kind of state duty. It's, it's beyond the scope. Right. Yeah, as long as you're comfortable with the term. So you know what estate duty is, you know what donations tax is, you know what CGT is, you know you need to know what all these different taxes are. That's key. Because okay, when it comes to personal financial management, we need to know how to manage those taxes. Okay. Estate duty, CGT, income tax, VAT, right. all the different taxes, donations tax. As long as you're familiar with the different types of taxes that would be applicable to who? The individual. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So then we've got site and PAYE. This is the most common one that you see. So if you're an employee, okay, you would have to pay, pay as you earn. All right. Site used to be quite popular before the tables were revised. Okay. Nowadays, site isn't such a big consideration. It's generally the pay as you earn that's the main focus. All right. So pay as you earn is what? A tax on your Sorry. earnings, yes. Hundred percent. Right. What is provisional income tax? Is that just an ask? Sorry. They don't use it anymore. Uh, it still exists, it's still part of the legislation, but it's not a big consideration in terms of calculation. You can separate it, you can work out site separate and then pay as you earn. Okay. Site is just your f uh, site is it's like pay as you earn, but for um, employees with a smaller amount of oh, remuneration, so yeah. Remuneration. Basically, okay. I think it, it's like sixty-five or something, sixty-five thousand a year or something like that. That's actually not sixty-five. Uh, well, you have to pay both, right? If you're earning a salary, obviously, depending on your level of earnings, you would either pay site and pay as you earn, or just the one, perhaps. Yeah. Okay, but they're the same thing. They're employee taxes. Right. What is provisional tax? Something pay every six months. Correct. Good. Okay, so individuals who run businesses, individuals who own businesses, individuals who are directors, okay, pay provisional income tax. People who have property that is rented out, as long as you have other forms of income, normally you're considered a provisional income tax payer. Okay, and as you said, you pay tax more frequently. Frequently. More frequently, yes. Okay. All right, so then I've given you a diagram. You saw this in tax 2601. I'm showing the reconciliation. Okay, so what happens? I need to write down a few things here. What happens? You, as the employee, get what from your company? Get your salary. Your IRP5, yes. Okay, and then what must you do with the IRP5? You need to reconcile. Correct. Okay, and that's the process that you're going to have to go through in terms of a tax reconciliation. Okay, reconciliation. Right, so when filing a tax return, that's exactly what you're looking at. You're looking at the tax reconciliation. You're reconciling your books with SARS's because the company would have issued SARS with a, a, a form that documents how much you've earned from that employer. Okay. This you've also seen, so just remember the general format. You're not going to have to do a calculation for tax. I've just put that in for reference purposes. Okay, and the same thing here. Sometimes, okay, you will have rebates and more than one, so primary, secondary, even a, a, a tertiary rebate, right? And the tax tables are applicable here because individuals are taxed according to a progressive system. Okay, what does that mean? Well, the more I earn, the more I pay in terms of taxes. Okay, companies pay a flat rate of tax. That's proportional. Okay. All right, and then I've given you some notes here about the legislation. Again, a little bit beyond the scope. They mention one or two things about the legislation in the book, and they talk about the Income Tax Act. Okay, the Act always gets revised from time to time, and it gets reviewed and uh, and amended. Okay, there are certain amendments that can occur, right, that update the Income Tax Act. So individuals and companies can pay the correct amount of tax towards 
um, the government shower. Okay. All right. The tax year for an individual is how long? Twelve months. Twelve months. Okay. And it ends when? Correct. Okay. Twenty eight Feb every year. Right, and the tax return, normally the, the filing system opens at around July. Okay, so 1st July, tax season is open. So in today's world, you can actually submit your tax return now to claim for certain expenses over the life of, of the business. Yeah. Right, and then we spoke about taxable income here and the tax liability. You obviously need to identify those different, um, how can I say, different... Line items, okay, and those line items will then affect your taxable income, which is your amount that you're going to have to pay as a liability.